The ocean can seem calm and predictable, until it's not. On a quite sunny day, an orca, the ocean's apex predator, unexpectedly charges a boat, ramming its rudder and leaving the crew stranded. In marine parks, the danger is no less real, as even well-trained orcas turn on their handlers in terrifying displays of power. These moments serve as chilling reminders of the untamed strength and intelligence of these majestic creatures, and the risks humans take when interacting with them. Emily Cadeau grew up mesmerized by the majesty of orcas. Her childhood fascination with these oceanic predators was born from family trips to Blue Waters Marine Park. Every summer, Emily would watch in awe as trainers interacted with the orcas, performing intricate routines that demonstrated trust and understanding between humans and animals. By the time she was 10, her bedroom walls were adorned with posters of orcas leaping into the air, each image a testament to her dream. One day, she would work alongside these magnificent creatures. Years later, at 28, Emily's dream had become reality. With nearly a decade of experience, she was now one of the most skilled trainers at Blue Waters Marine Park. Her relationship with Nar, the park's star orca, was the envy of her colleagues. Together, they performed breathtaking routines that left audiences in awe. Emily's friends often joked that she spent more time at the park than at home, a sentiment not far from the truth. For Emily, Blue Waters wasn't just a workplace, it was her sanctuary. But even the strongest bonds have their limits. In the weeks leading up to the incident, Emily began to notice subtle changes in Nar's behavior. The usually energetic orca seemed restless and distant. While others dismissed her concerns as overthinking, Emily couldn't shake the feeling that something was wrong. Her unease grew, but she hoped the show would go smoothly, as it always had. The fateful day began like any other. The sun shone brightly over Blue Waters Marine Park as visitors poured into the amphitheater, eager to watch the orca performance. Emily stood by the tank, her wetsuit gleaming in the sunlight as she prepared for the show. Nar glided through the water, her massive dorsal fin cutting gracefully through the surface. Despite the crowd's excitement, Emily couldn't ignore the nervous energy building in her chest. Nar's movements were sharper and more erratic than usual, but there was no time to dwell on her fears. The show had to go on. As the performance began, Nar executed her opening routines flawlessly. She leaped into the air, her powerful body creating a cascade of water that drenched the delighted audience. The crowd erupted in cheers, and for a brief moment, Emily felt a flicker of relief Perhaps she had been worrying for nothing. But as the show progressed, her unease returned. Nar's movements grew faster, her circles tighter, and her eyes seemed to hold a glint of something unrecognizable, something wild. Finally, it was time for the finale, a signature move that never failed to captivate the audience. Emily dove into the tank, her body slicing through the cool water as the audience's cheers reached a crescendo. She signaled for Nar to join her, and the orca responded, her massive shadow passing beneath Emily. The trainer extended a hand, motioning for Nar to back up slightly, but the orca didn't obey. Instead, she surged forward, her powerful jaws clamping down on Emily's leg with terrifying force. The water erupted into chaos. Nar dragged Emily downward. Her immense strength is overwhelming the trainer's desperate attempts to break free. Panic surged through Emily's body, as she felt the icy sting of pain shoot through her leg. Blood clouded the water, turning it a murky red. Above the surface, the crowd's cheers turned to gasps, then horrified screams, as the reality of the situation dawned on them. Emily's parents, seated in the front row, watched in helpless terror as their daughter struggled against the orca's unrelenting grip. Trainers on the edge of the tank sprang into action. They shouted commands, threw ropes, and tried to distract Nar with fish, but nothing worked. The orca's thrashing only intensified, pulling Emily deeper into the tank. Her movements grew weaker as her strength waned. In a final, desperate effort, she reached for the surface, her hand breaking through the water for a fleeting moment before Nar dragged her back under. For the crowd, the spectacle was a horrifying reminder of the raw power these creatures possess. The water grew still, darkened by blood, as Nar's thrashing ceased. When the orca finally released Emily, 
her lifeless body floated slowly to the surface. Rescue divers reached her within seconds, pulling her from the tank, but it was already too late. The park fell silent, the joyous atmosphere replaced by a blanket of shock and grief. In the days that followed, Blue Waters Marine Park suspended all orca performances. The gates eventually closed for good, the tragedy marking the end of an era. Emily's family held a quiet memorial by the ocean, where her love for marine life had first taken root. Friends and colleagues shared stories of her passion and dedication, their voices tinged with sorrow. For those who had witnessed the event, it was a haunting reminder of the unpredictable nature of these majestic animals. NAR's actions, while tragic, were not entirely surprising to marine experts. Orcas, or killer whales, are apex predators with unmatched intelligence and strength. In the wild, they navigate vast oceanic territories, hunting seals, fish, and even other whales with precision and cunning. Captivity, however, strips them of their natural behaviors, confining them to small tanks that fail to replicate the complexity of their natural environment. Experts believe that this confinement can lead to stress, frustration, and unpredictable aggression. It was a warm, sunny day at SeaWorld Orlando, where hundreds of visitors had gathered to enjoy the park's iconic orca shows. For the trainers, it was just another day of rehearsals and routines with the park's resident killer whales. These highly trained individuals spent countless hours developing trust and rapport with the orcas, preparing for awe-inspiring performances that wowed the crowds. However, what began as a routine interaction on June 13, 2022, quickly turned into a life-altering moment for one trainer. During a routine session with one of the park's orcas, a female trainer found herself in a terrifying situation. As part of the session, the trainer extended her arm to signal a behavior. Without warning, the orca surged forward and clamped its powerful jaws around her arm. The bite was swift but devastating, breaking several bones in the trainer's forearm. Witnesses described a mix of gasps and shouts as onlookers realized the severity of what had just occurred. The trainer, though in immense pain, maintained remarkable composure, using her experience and instincts to de-escalate the situation. The orca released her arm after what felt like an eternity, and emergency protocols were immediately activated. Fellow trainers rushed to her side, guiding her out of the water and stabilizing her until paramedics arrived. The trainer was quickly transported to a nearby hospital, where doctors confirmed multiple fractures and severe tissue damage. She would later require extensive surgery and months of rehabilitation to regain functionality in her arm. The incident sent shockwaves through SeaWorld Orlando and the wider marine park community. While orca-related injuries are rare, they are not unprecedented. These animals, though trained and accustomed to human interaction, remain wild at heart. Their immense size, averaging 20 to 26 feet in length and weighing up to 12,000 pounds, combined with their unpredictable behavior, makes working with them inherently risky. Trainers are well aware of these risks, yet such incidents highlight the ever-present danger of working with apex predators. As news of the incident spread, the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, OSHA, launched an investigation to determine whether any safety violations had occurred. OSHA had scrutinized SeaWorld in the past, particularly after the high-profile case involving Don Bronchot in 2010. However, this investigation concluded that there was no evidence of negligence or failure to adhere to safety protocols during the June 2022 incident. The findings absolved SeaWorld of any direct responsibility, but the incident reignited debates about the ethics of keeping orcas in captivity. Animal rights advocates were quick to point out the psychological toll captivity takes on orcas. In the wild, these animals swim up to 100 miles a day, engaging in complex social behaviors and hunting in pods. In captivity, however, they are confined to relatively small tanks and subjected to rigorous training schedules. Critics argue that these conditions can lead to frustration, stress, and even aggression. The incident at SeaWorld Orlando became another example for those who believe captivity is incompatible with the welfare of such intelligent and powerful creatures. SeaWorld, for its part, emphasized its commitment to trainer safety and orca welfare. In a statement, the park highlighted the extensive training its staff undergoes, including emergency protocols for high-risk situations. 
SeaWorld also reiterated its adherence to federal and state regulations governing marine parks and animal welfare. Despite these reassurances, the incident added fuel to the ongoing debate over the future of orca captivity. For the injured trainer, the road to recovery was long and arduous. Physical therapy sessions became a daily routine, and the emotional scars of the incident were just as challenging to heal. However, her dedication to the animals never wavered. In interviews conducted months later, she expressed a deep understanding of the risks involved and a continued passion for working with orcas. Her story became a testament to the courage and resilience of trainers who dedicate their lives to working with these majestic yet unpredictable creatures. Beyond the personal story, the incident reignited discussions within the marine park industry about balancing human safety with animal welfare. Some experts advocated for the continuation of orca performances, arguing that they provide valuable opportunities for public education and marine conservation awareness. Others called for the complete cessation of such shows, suggesting that orcas should instead be placed in sea sanctuaries where they can live in more natural conditions while still receiving care. The trainer's injury also led to renewed scrutiny of the effectiveness of current safety measures. While SeaWorld had implemented significant changes following previous incidents, including the introduction of barriers between trainers and orcas during performances, some questioned whether more could be done. Suggestions included enhanced training for emergency scenarios, improved monitoring of orca behavior, and exploring alternative ways to engage with these animals that don't involve direct physical contact. Meanwhile, the incident became a rallying point for animal advocacy organizations. Groups like PETA and the Humane Society used the story to amplify their campaigns against marine mammal captivity. Public sentiment continued to shift, with more people questioning the ethics of keeping orcas in tanks for entertainment. Documentaries like Blackfish had already brought these issues to the forefront, and incidents like the one in June 2022 further eroded public support for traditional marine park practices. In the summer of 2024, the tranquil seas off the coast of Portugal became the setting for a harrowing ordeal when the Norwegian yacht Helgesen found itself at the mercy of a pod of orcas. What began as a routine voyage for the seasoned crew turned into a nightmare that would end with their vessel lost beneath the waves. The Helgesen, a 40-foot yacht, was en route from Lisbon to Gibraltar, navigating waters known for their beauty and recently for a concerning rise in orca activity. The day was calm, with clear skies and gentle waves, as the crew of four enjoyed their journey. They were experienced sailors, aware of the risks in the Strait of Gibraltar and the Atlantic approaches, but nothing could have prepared them for what unfolded. It started with faint splashes in the distance, at first a curiosity, then a concern, as a pod of orcas began closing in on the yacht. Orcas, often referred to as wolves of the sea, are apex predators, renowned for their intelligence and complex social structures. In recent years, this area has seen an uptick in aggressive orca encounters, with the animals targeting the rudders of boats, seemingly in coordinated efforts to disable them. The Helgeson was about to become their latest target. The crew quickly realized the orcas weren't just passing by. Within minutes, the pods surrounded the yacht, their sleek bodies cutting through the water with precision. Then came the first impact, a sudden, jarring blow to the stern as one of the orcas rammed the yacht's rudder. The impact reverberated through the vessel, startling the crew and causing one of them to lose their balance. Before they could react, a second and third strike followed in quick succession, each hit more forceful than the last. Panic set in as the crew scrambled to assess the damage. The yacht's rudder was their primary means of steering, and with each attack, it became increasingly compromised. One crew member peered over the stern, only to witness the orcas systematically targeting the vulnerable rudder with their powerful jaws and ramming it with their massive bodies. It was clear this was no random encounter. The pod was working together with calculated intent. Despite the crew's best efforts to evade the attackers, the yacht's steering became unresponsive, and water began seeping into the hull through the compromised stern. The situation was dire. They sent out a distress signal, hoping for a swift response from nearby vessels or maritime authorities. Meanwhile, they enacted emergency protocols, donning life jackets and preparing the life raft as the orcas continued their relentless assault. 
The final blow came when one particularly forceful strike caused the rudder to break away completely, leaving the Helgeson adrift and vulnerable. Water poured into the yacht faster than the crew could manage, and it became evident that the vessel was sinking. The crew worked quickly to deploy the life raft, gathering essential supplies and abandoning ship just as the Helgeson began to tip precariously to one side. The pod lingered as the yacht sank, their dorsal fins slicing through the water ominously close to the life raft. The crew huddled together, watching helplessly as their vessel disappeared beneath the waves. Though terrified, they remained composed, knowing rescue was on the way. Within an hour, a nearby cargo ship responded to their distress signal and arrived to pull them to safety. The loss of the Helgeson added to a growing list of incidents involving orcas in the region. Maritime experts and researchers had been closely monitoring this behavioral trend, which seemed to be escalating in both frequency and intensity. Speculations about the reasons behind these attacks ranged from territoriality to stress or learned behavior within specific pods. The orcas targeting the Helgeson appeared to belong to a group already notorious for similar encounters, leading to increased concerns among sailors. For the crew of the Helgeson, the experience was a sobering reminder of the power and unpredictability of nature. Though they escaped unharmed, the emotional toll of the encounter was significant. The captain later described the event to maritime authorities, highlighting the calculated and coordinated nature of the orca's actions during the attack. Their behavior demonstrated a level of strategy and determination that left the crew feeling powerless in the face of such an overwhelming force. In response to this and other incidents, maritime organizations have ramped up efforts to mitigate the risks posed by orca encounters. New guidelines advise sailors to shut off engines, avoid sudden movements, and refrain from engaging with the animals. Acoustic deterrence and non-lethal methods to redirect orcas have also been tested, though their effectiveness remains inconsistent. The sinking of the Helgeson reignited discussions about human activity in marine ecosystems and its potential impact on orca behavior. Some researchers argue that increased boat traffic and environmental changes could be contributing to the aggression observed in these pods. Others suggest that specific groups of orcas may be teaching these behaviors to younger generations, further complicating efforts to address the issue. If you enjoyed this video, watch our next one shown on screen.